The invention of the steam engine actually dates back to the first century, where those were basically toys to impress Greek women. Now, there were later most some notable improvements in the late 17th and early 18th centuries to try to make them useful. But it was in 1765 when James Watt was able to mature the steam engine into a practical machine to do work, thus helping spur the Industrial Revolution. After that, inventors quickly modified his work to motivate trains, ships, and even automobiles. The Sterling Kit BL1K steam engine comes in quite a classy packaging, with major engine parts in separate foam compartments. I mean, I almost didn't want to take the parts out of their holders. But when I did, I was treated to some really nicely cast brass parts, which also had machine services and strategic locations. I like how the crankshaft assembly comes pre-assembled from the factory. Here's the tank and boiler assembly, which includes a pressure gauge. You also get some tools. Manual has lots of diagrams, which are generally pretty clear once you understand the logic of the layout. Nice bill of materials list. I noticed that all the parts bags are numbered to match the index in the manual for easy reference. I really like that. Small servo boxes are recruited to hold parts while I build. We start with this rather cool looking crank assembly with a couple of bushings and pillow blocks that are then bolted on to an open crankcase base. Make sure it spins freely. Next is the piston assembly, which needs a O-ring seal installed. The manual calls out which screws need to be thread locked, so be sure to pay attention. This particular screw was a bit fiddly to get started, but persistence paid off. Be sure to line a notch in the gasket correctly when adding the piston assembly to the top block. I use a combination of light machine oil and air to oil on the moving parts. <laughs> the reversing levers were also a bit fiddly. The included micro wrench came in really handy and is Lilliputian approved. You'll have to snap on some really tiny seed clips to the wrist pin. There are quite a few really tiny screws, so be careful opening the parts bag. And this completed the reversing mechanism. The valve assembly is next. At first, the valve assembly was hard to move until I realized I had the collar screw facing the wrong direction. So after rotating it 180 degrees, everything was much smoother. Oh look, more fiddly bits. But the oil reservoir went together without any issues.
At this point, I notice the output shaft is 4 millimeters in diameter. Now I can move on to the boiler parts, starting with the shield. Then the water tank, which has a water level window. Not sure what this screw is for. But the other side is where the pressure gauge goes. It's very useful. <laughs> I love the mini wheel valve. The fuel container comes mostly assembled. But I was curious what was inside. So I removed the top plate. Turns out there's nothing serviceable in there and there is a seal of some sort. So don't try this at home. The last step is to mount the assemblies onto the base plate. And we have a steam engine! The last thing is to add some timing marks for a tachometer. Time to light the fire! And for that, I'll need some distilled water for the boiler. And a fire extinguisher in case mistakes are made. I first tried pouring water from a beaker, but that proved a bit too messy. So I tried a large pipette which was a bit better. I stopped at about half a tank, since this was just a trial run. Then I made sure the output valve was closed. I'll be using plain old denatured alcohol for fuel. I poured in about 40 milliliters of fuel for this test, but the manual recommends 60 milliliters. I may try using a syringe next time to prevent overspill. All right, it's showtime. Alcohol burns nearly invisible, so lights off to check. Yep, the candle is lit. While the water was heating up, I grabbed a special steam oil I had found on eBay and added it to the oil reservoir. When the pressure got up to about 2 bar, I tested the pressure release valve. Oh yeah, she's ready. Okay, carefully open up the valve about a quarter turn and hope she starts up. Though I have no idea which way it should spin. Hmm, maybe with a bit more steam power. Oh. She's alive! And running out of steam. Huh, I wonder why it petered out so quickly. After building the pressure back up, oh, cool. she automatically started without hand starting. But this time, I closed the valve until she ticked over at a slow speed. Huh. With some experimenting, I was able to find the right balance of speed and steam power. I gave the reverser a go, which worked, but also stopped the engine in the process. Uh. 
<laughs> All right, after a little bit of fiddling, I've gotten to run pretty consistently. Now, this is, of course, my very first steam engine, so I barely know what I'm doing, but barely know what I'm doing, I still got it to run. It got it to run really quite quickly. Now, an interesting thing is I gotta really be careful about how much power I use and the pressure, because if I open it too much, the pressure starts going out really quick, and then it'll stop. And so right now it seems to be a, a pretty good speed where the pressure is pretty consistent, almost at two bar. And it seems to be ticking away pretty good, maybe just a couple hundred RPM or so. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's, it looks like it'll run like this pretty, pretty much until it burn runs out of water. And I still got maybe a third of a tank left. And uh, I did, of course, fill it up with fuel all the way, so I don't know how long the fuel's gonna run, but I wanted to be careful. I didn't put, I didn't put all the water in it, and I didn't put all the fuel in it just to see if it runs. And of course, also the manual talks about how you have to break in the engine as well. So I guess just like uh, gas powered and glow fueled engines, you need to break it in. So um, it's maybe, it'll, I'm, I'm sure it'll run a little better. In fact, I think I just heard it increase in RPM just slightly. So I'm sure as, I, as it gets broken in, it'll run smoother. Uh, the reversing seems to work, but uh, um, it looks like it stops in the middle reverse, but I'll, I'll try it again uh, after it's broken a little bit, see if it runs a little smoother. But man, I am a tickled pink. Uh, well, uh, that it is running, and it's running really pretty cool. It, it sounds great. Let's leave the sucker. I'm getting visions of uh, Steamboat Willie and uh, little putt-putt uh, tractors and that kind of stuff. It just sounds cool. Yes, it sounds like it's, uh, you hear that? It's, it's sped up a little bit. I haven't touched it. So maybe it's already starting to work itself in. So the manual says expect to take it about an hour or so to work it. Oh, hello. Little hiccup there. In fact, the pressure has actually increased slightly. So just tweaking the, the uh, valve, steam valve there, exhaust valve, whatever you want to call it, uh, just a little bit gives you the right RPMs. Yeah, here, you can hear it kind of speed up a bit. So yeah, it sounds like it's uh, working itself in a little bit. And that is just too cool. Uh, fortunately, the RPM, the little notches I thought for the RPM uh, tachometer doesn't seem to be working. I might try white patches instead of black and see if that works better. Uh, Cause I'm really curious about what it's spinning. But man, this is, this is really neat. Uh, ancient, ancient technology, but it is still just a marvelous, probably something that helped spur the industrial revolution. And uh, it's just cool to have a miniature version and uh, really pretty easy to build, actually. Just gotta pay attention to certain things. And uh, hopefully it keeps running. I'll have to check the uh, oil tank after it's done a bit. They said you should expect about 30 minutes of runtime on a uh, vat of water and um, uh, fuel. So it's neat that I can just run regular denatured alcohol. But just be careful of the flames because they are invisible. But uh, look at this baby go. Of course, I gotta put on my gloves here to Let's see if I speed up a little bit. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, seems to be holding the pressure more or less. Going on just a little bit. After running a bit longer, I could get it to reverse without stalling, mostly. I expect it to get better after breaking in. Eventually, I ran out of water and knew the end was near. The manual says to place a strip of metal over the burner to extinguish it. It didn't quite work at first. I think my piece of metal was too big and needs to fit between the screws. But eventually it went out. And much of the engine wasn't too hot afterwards. I actually remember in grade school, one of my teachers had a steam engine in his classroom. Now, for some reason, he never ran it, but he did let me blow air into the intake to make it run. Uh, now this provided me with endless entertainment. Yeah, I was kind of a weird kid. Uh, in fact, I may have passed out due to lack of oxygen, but I don't remember.
Anyways, this was a great afternoon project that more or less went off without a hitch. And I even learned a little something about steam engines. Now, if you know me, I didn't just get this to sit on the bench. I actually think I could make it earn its keep. So I'm hoping to make a part two of this video where I use this engine in an RC vehicle. Stay tuned. Hi, thanks for watching. Please take a look at the video description below for special hobby view sales and discounts. Your purchases help support this channel. Happy modeling.